Hi guys, follow me on Instagram to never ever miss any of my crazy updates. Hi guys and welcome to another vlog. I'm riding this. This is the Yamaha Aerox right in front. It's sort of a maxi scooter. It's the most powerful scooter in India right now. First and foremost, what you are going to do, we are going to put the key and then I'm going to open the fuel lid. Yeah, it gets an external fuel lid. Yeah, I'm just going to shut it. And to open the seat, I press this button and there the seat also opens. Now the under seat is actually big enough. You can probably put a helmet in there without any issue. There is where you get the wind number. You have to pull this to get the wind number, which is right behind. And it says motorcycle connect. It gets Yamaha's motorcycle connect as well. Bluetooth system. The problem is that, uh, you know, it doesn't give you information about navigation or audio. You get uh, alerts about SMS as well as calls. And you can get a lot of information on the app as well. So we are going to turn on the scooter right away. And there it rose to life. The reason I turn on the scooter is so that I can show you the lights. Now, these lights might look a little bit like the Yamaha R15 version 3. These are LED lights. It gets all LEDs, but the indicators are not LEDs on this scooter. Front disc happens to be 230mm. Tire size is actually big enough. 110, 80, 14. Nice orange colored wheels. And I love the treatment of this scooter because you see, it's not like a traditional scooter which has a proper footboard. This one has an underbone chassis, so it's taking place there. I mean, it's occupying the space there. It says VVA, variable valve actuation, Aerox. This is the Aerox 155. This is where the radiator is actually and the fan is right behind, side mounted, kind of funny. And this is a little bit flimsy, so a lot of flimsy, but you can see there's this panel gap here for the fuel lid as well. Nice big exhaust, rear tyre happens to be 140, 70, 14, but it gets a 130mm rear drum, no rear disc, that is kind of disappointing. Rear light looks nice, but again, non-LED indicators and this is where the engine is, which happens to be a 155cc motor. Now it is on the main stand at the moment. 155 written there, Yamaha logo. Nice color treatment. I really like it as such. And uh, the mirrors you talk about it when we're riding this motorcycle. Master cylinder. It gets a LCD display for the instrument cluster. Okay, when you turn it on, let me show it to you. I'm just going to turn off the scooter. And when you turn it on, there it does a full swipe up. So I'm just going to do one thing. I'm going to get onto the scooter and we're just going to zoom in so that it's clear what you're going to see. So here, turn it off and turn it on. Full swipe up of sorts. Okay. Now, this is for the tachometer, this is for the speedometer, there is a clock here, telltale lights come right below and this is the fuel meter. Now, you can browse through this multi-information display with a button on the left side so you can see there are twin trip meters, it also tells you how much you have run after, you know, when the reserve light actually started. This is the real-time fuel economy, right? this is the average fuel economy, this is the real-time fuel economy, not bad, 36.2 or something of that sort. This is the battery voltage, I believe. This is the trip meter, again, we're in the trip meter, I believe. And it's actually telling you what is the, yeah, actually, how much time uh, has the oil been changed from? So it was in the trip meter. It is also telling you since when the belt was changed, because this is actually a belt drive, not a chain drive. This is the version of the Bluetooth system. So all this information right there in your fingertips. And this is the menu button, which you have to press. This is for low beam and high beam. This is for the indicator. This is for the horn. The horn is actually loud enough. Let's turn on the motorcycle again. I'm saying it's a motorcycle because it is actually a motorcycle in a scooter body. And there you can see how the revs actually work. That's really nice. Every time I use the uh, throttle, the bike is actually moving ahead. Again, I'm calling it a bike. It says blue core right there. Let's get onto high beam so that you can see how it looks. The lights are actually quite nice on this scooter. Let's turn on the indicators as well since I am on it. There you see. I mean, come on, the indicator placement is such that you can't really see it properly. But this is a scooter which looks unlike anything else on the road. The seats are also very comfortable. I love this white stitching here. Says Aerox right there and then you can slot your derriere right there. Pillion comfort is just about average, but that's something anything with the R15 DNA is going to have. And this definitely has the R15 DNA, but is it even close to the R15 in terms of riding? Well, let's go before that. Let me show you. It has got twin shocks. Yeah, not a mono shock. I think because of the weight of the engine, they had to actually position it this way. Let's start riding right away. All right, time to go. Here we turn on the scooter and off we go in no time at all. First and foremost, I'll tell you now that it doesn't have enough space for someone as tall as me. So my knee is actually touching here, which is kind of dangerous over a bump. Now I can get a little bit of an injury. So not really for tall riders. I think the seat height is 790 mm, but I'm sitting so higher up now. I feel I'm not even on this uh, motorcycle scooter. Paisal scooter, bolne kabhi to bol scooter, sharam kar. Kaise bolu scooter hai? Motorcycle feel hai puri. Yeah, of course. And oh my God, uh, it has amazing amount of response. You can see it feels very 
very responsive and in no time at all it's actually doing 80 kilometers per hour so this is a fantastic engine this is a 150 c sorry 155 cc it's a liquid cooled four valve and uh, single cylinder motor of course coming from the r15 however there's a difference here the r15 produces 18.4 horsepower and 14.2 newton meters of torque but here it produces 15 horsepower and 13.9 newton meters of torque and the difference is largely because yamaha had to put in a cvt box here belt drive of course the reason for cvt is because scooters are cvt and with cvt you get the rubber band effect and so they had to retune a lot of things but initial response is good mid-range is absolutely phenomenal and it also has a top end as such but because of the rubber band effect of the cvt box it doesn't really redline like an r15 it redlines much lower as such but hey that's not an issue at all because mid-range performance is stupendous to say the least and then you can also filter through traffic without any issue whatsoever but the bigger problem here is that you know what uh you try to push it real hard now you realize that over bad bumps the rear suspension is not that compliant okay it kind of gives the bounce back effect it's very stiff front is good and compliant but the rear not so much so this is not a comfortable scooter i can say it's not even practical considering my seating position and there's actually a usb charging socket a 12 volt charging socket inside this storage space on the left i've not shown it to you i guess i forgot about that uses i mean gets a single channel abs why single channel should have got a dual channel abs but then yamaha is like obviously we want to cut costs and give a more aggressive price point for this scooter and filtering through traffic is not an issue it is decently agile and nimble but you know that weight transfer doesn't happen so fluidly as say the aprilia or uh, the aprilia sr 160 or whatever that is known i keep forgetting that name because i really don't care let's stop brakes could be so much better yeah rear just does not get inspire conference drum no 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 scooter has turned off right now because it's got a stop start system which you can see here and as soon as i get on the throttle the scooter turns on very fluid very smooth again it's shut off meanwhile let me show you this is a storage space you can just press it like this and here there happens to be a usb charging socket which is not a usb charging socket which is more like a 12 volt charging socket this thing is not great at all i mean look at that so flimsy as such anyways here scooter comes to life revving the motor and off we go trying to become aerodynamic right now there you see the magic number on the speedometer 106 kilometers per hour 7 kilometers per hour vva light has come 110 yeah baby so yes it does a top speed of around 110 115 kilometers per hour vva actually kicks in around 6000 rpm and then gives it a nice stop and feel too so this is by far a very fun scooter to ride not practical and obviously ladies won't be able to ride because of the way the chassis is done this underbone in the center so it's won't be easy to get on it and off it but for guys they can just jump in not so much for the ladies and unfortunately the outside rear view mirror the mirrors are only on the outside passenger this is not a car okay the mirrors are kind of useless i can't see much of what's behind other than my jacket but hey that's fine okay there's a lot of wind blasted high speeds which is actually a good thing because i can absolutely breathe as well i just wished you know the rear wouldn't give me such a bounce back effect all the time because it, it continuously does that and then i feel so uncomfy at the moment come on yamaha you could have done that much 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 better as well fuel efficiency should be somewhere around 32 to 40 kilometers per liter which is fine depends on your riding style of course and then it has got a 5 liter fuel tank which is chintu mintu but on par with rest of the scooters as soon as you tap it like this it turns on that's really nice you're gonna get back on the seat and we are going to launch it and off we go as aerodynamic i can get i'll try that it doesn't hesitate to reach 80 kilometers per hour doesn't even hesitate till 90 kilometers per hour doesn't even hesitate beyond 90 kilometers per hour and then around 100 kilometers per hour then the progress really slows down dramatically takes its own sweet time to you know reach 110 kilometers per hour it stops speed but this engine is absolutely phenomenal it is so refined it is so smooth it's a wonderful unit i love the engine on this uh, scooter motorcycle whatever you want to call it 110 is all it does beyond that it kind of struggles you really need a cliff or something to accelerate further than 110 kilometers per hour on the scooter and the footboard area is not the best not the most comfy it's like a motorcycle in a scooter body because that's how i'm sitting on it right now 
So it's wonderful indeed. Now the price is 1.55 lakhs on road Mumbai for the version I'm riding right now. And there's a Moto GP or Monster Energy version as well, which is priced around 1500 rupees more, almost 1.57 lakhs. All the prices are on road Mumbai, and for that price, you get the most powerful scooter in the Indian market, the best handling scooter in the Indian market, and the most impractical scooter in the Indian market as well. But hey, you're not going to complain. Handles really well. I mean, this is indeed fun, and the tires offer stupendous grip as well. So guys, this is my vlog of the Yamaha Aerox 155. I like it a lot. I think it's fantabulous. If you like this vlog, make sure to give the thumbs up. That's a like button, and also subscribe to the channel. I know you guys are like, "Arey, turn market to the car. They how is it around the corners? I mean, corner, no, but I can show you a U-turn right away because the signal is green. But this auntie is going to come in the way. Auntie, hot, 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 hot. Oh, green signal. Let's go. Here we go. Yeah. So it's not much of an effort. Yeah, it does it very nicely. Only thing is, oh my God, that's so smooth and easy. I think weight is around 125, 127 kgs. But then you want to get the balance back now. So shifting from one corner to another, that is where it kind of struggles. It, it doesn't move so fluidly from one side to another. And I think the Aprilia is better in that regard. And in traffic also, because this handlebar is positioned lower than what is there on traditional scooters. So lower handlebar, and I'm sitting so high, so I can't even see the speedometer unless and until I put my face all the way down like this. Oh, there is the speedometer. Oh, thank you for coming. <laughs> पता नहीं कुछ अलग ही मजा आता है स्कूटर पे चढ़ के स्पेशली यू नो इन द डे वेन इट्स सो हॉट बिकॉज द विंड इन द जैकेट एंड द विंड इन द हेलमेट कमिंग चिंटू चिंटू फ्रॉम नीचे से रियली गिव्स दैट यू नो नाइस सूदिंग फील एंड आई एम गोन टू कंटिन्यू एंजॉय दिस फील यू कैन टेक केयर बाय